So welcome, Mark. It's great to have you here. Hi, Jamie. Yeah, nice to be with you again. Yeah, good to see you. And, and yeah. you may know that the place I like to start these conversations is by asking, what first sparked your interest in the principles uh, articulated by Sydney Banks? Um, well, when I got interested, uh, it was before the formation of the principles or the introduction of the principles. But actually, um, I was looking and I'm, uh, I was looking for being happier myself. Mm. And um, I'd been working clinically as a psychologist for several years. And I wanted to take my clients further. Uh, they were doing okay, but I just, I think most of my life, I felt there was something about us that, um, I don't know, was kind of, um, uh, you know, something within us that we can take care of life ourselves, or there's something in us to find and discover. So I was helping clients get better, but I just knew there was more. So um, actually, I, I, I just called um, one of my supervisors during my clinical fellowship, and he mentioned that Sydney Banks uh, was doing a seminar that week. And so I thought, let's go, you know, and um and so I, I went to his seminar and I had a, a really deep insight. And also, uh, I heard from Sidney Banks uh, that what you're looking for is already in you. It's not, you're not going to try to master an approach that Sidney Banks had. You're going to find it for yourself. And that sold me because all of my other... Um, uh, teachers for different psychotherapy approaches, you'd always try to master their technique. Mm -hmm. But when uh, Sidney Banks said, um, uh, you have it within, uh, I really knew this was the person to listen to. And then I had this wonderful insight and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, um, later I thought, man, this is what I was looking for, uh, that we can see something beyond our usual way of looking at life that really brings us to happiness and understanding. And so that, that was my first introduction. And in those, in those days, it was, it was yet, the principles were yet to be formulated and introduced to people. But, but, it did, but Sidney did talk about thought. He talked about consciousness, levels of consciousness, and honored really the deep feeling of well-being in all people and wisdom. Yeah, I love that, Mark. And and when you heard Sid say, it's in you, it, people yeah. already have it. Yeah. In them. What, what did, what, as you think about that now, what did he, what did he mean by that? Well, you know, um, uh, I knew, you know, it's funny that when you hear truth, uh, a spiritual truth or a truth about nature or life, you know, uh, you you know it's true. Mm. Um, so when I first heard it, I didn't know what that was. Um, because, because at that time, I was intellectually trying to find what that would be within me, you know? <laughs> and uh, I knew, you know, I know, of course, uh, where he wasn't talking about physical, like it's in your heart or brain. I knew that, but I was still intellectually trying to find, well, what is this within me? What I've come to realize for myself is that it's a spiritual energy. It's what I, I am a part of. Mm -hmm. And um, it's what uh, is behind my coming to life and, and my forming uh, as nature would have me form into this physical being. But it's really that, um, that, it's not something I'll ever grasp intellectually, but I, I'm, I'm gaining more and more of a feel for the fact that um, uh, there, there's this spiritual knowledge and intelligence that I am a part of, and it can guide me through life. So that's what I've come to. But initially, um, I knew it was true, right? You get that feeling that this is true, but you have no inkling, like, you know, where do you get that? <laughs> so that's what it's come to, though, is to see it as um, kind of relax about that and just just 
kind of have a feeling that that's what we are a part of. Yeah, I really like that. And and the other couple of things you said, you said you wanted uh, to be happier yourself and you wanted yeah. to make a bigger difference to your clients. Yes. What What are some of the differences you've noticed and kind of whether you want to call it insights or realizations or just call it changes that you've noticed since starting to have realizations into this understanding, what is it that's happened? Let's start with, for you personally, what are the changes it's made for you personally? Well, you know, um, one of the things about, so first of all, I will speak to that, but you know, Jamie, one of the things about, you know, gaining insights and realizations with this understanding is that you're always learning more. So, you know, I have, um, like 38 years now of um, continuing to evolve that understanding. I think that's really promising. It's really promising. It's like so hopeful to know that if you don't see something now, you know, if you keep just open to it, you something will occur to you. Mm-hmm. But, and, but so some, so I'll talk about some of the initial things because there's been changes all along, but some of the more noticeable ones and powerful ones, because I went from here to there. Uh, The first one was really, um, um, it's hard to to have it seem like not some concept, but I saw that emotions were made up. That's Mm -hmm. what came to me. I was in this deep feeling, you know, and I just saw all these feelings that I was dealing with, my anger, worry, um, and so forth, you know, that I wanted to deal with to be happier, I just saw in this instant that they were made up. And then I saw thinking has something to do with it. Listening to Sid that night. Mm -hmm. And that uh, shifted the way I looked, right? I I started to look within to my thinking rather than continue the blame outside of me, like my circumstances and other people for feelings. So that was the big one. And I didn't know what to do with it. Hmm. Uh, But I knew if I could really understand what I had just come to, I'd be happier. Um, So that was one I was living with for several months. And along the way, I saw more things, you know, because I kept just staying with that understanding and continuing to look in not to change my thinking but to look within me Mm. whenever i got into a reaction i looked within to see well where is my thinking going and uh, very softly Mm. so it brought to mind a a couple of things that really changed me Uh, one of the things was to see other people uh, doing the same thing Hmm. and um, like they were the same as me, we were one. Um, that that was really powerful as well, to see that we were all this spiritual energy using the power of thought to create our experience. At that time, it was create my create feelings. Now that changed me in the way I related to people, uh, particularly my colleagues in the clinic, uh, I worked with 30 mental health professionals and once, a, once a, a week we would meet to discuss things and I would always be critiquing them because I was a very judgmental person. And it changed me because while I was sitting there, I just want to share the story because the insights aren't something I'm looking for. They just occur. You know, Jamie, they just occur. So I'm sitting there and I'm going in the same direction of, oh, I got to, I got to tell that person what the right way is. And all of a sudden it dawned on me, there you go again. You know, your, Mm -hmm. your thinking's taking you south. And then it occurred to me, this understanding that I was uh, coming to that, well, they're just doing the same thing you are. They just want to help people. Mm -hmm. And my heart went out to them. I had this deep insight into people uh, outside of my usual way of thinking about people. And it changed me. I became more, you could call it, I became more understanding of them. Well, and the thing I hear you in what you're saying, Mark, and I just want to underline this for people who are listening. Yes. It's not like you were 
going into those meetings going, now, how can I see this differently? Yes, yes. If you're anything like me, Mark, in this respect, I don't know if you were, but but I've had being judgmental is kind of like a guilty pleasure. Like it's, it's, it's this thing I do and I don't brag about it, but it's like, I got no problem with it either. And then all of a sudden I get hit by an insight where I'm like, oh, suddenly that way of being and judging that habit, if you like, that I had no problem with the, you know, last week, Today, it suddenly, it doesn't really make sense anymore. And it's like, whoa, like it wasn't even on my list of things I wanted figured out. I was good with it. But all of a sudden, it's not, it, it doesn't look the same. You know, um, this, the, the feeling of this, the, um, I guess you would call it the spiritual nature of this, in that um, we can't make, we can't make insights happen. And um, I wasn't really sitting there thinking I needed to change my thinking. That's the beautiful part of the principle's work now mm. is that you will get what you need. You don't, you don't, you can't use strategies because uh, you're still staying the same way when you use strategies, but things like that have come up all my life, you know, in terms of my marriage. Um, I wasn't even looking for a deeper way to be with my wife. And it just shows up in a moment when I'm kind of pissed off at my wife, you know, and I'm going, I'm in this separate room and all of a sudden it occurs to me, Mark, your thinking's off. And then in comes the answer, mm. which is like, you know, uh, you got to talk to her about the fact that, you know, uh, you're not really this way anymore. This was just a, a habit and uh, help her see that you've really changed. Mm. And I had never, ever thought about how to relate to people that way. And it was very powerful when I, I shared that because in her thinking, she was saying, oh man, he's been great for six months, but oh my God, there he is again, the same old guy. And uh, when I told her I wasn't the same old guy, that was just habit. Uh, we got closer. Mm. So, so Jamie, what you're sharing is that um, um, there's this uh, intelligence. I, I, the, to, to, to describe it in one way, it's my way of describing it, that is there for us that will uh, help us out in life. And it isn't anything that you can really uh, do as a strategy. You know, it just comes to you and uh, it changes the way you see life. And, and when you say it, it'll, it'll help us out in life, is it literally what you've just described as you see the power of that, that it'll give you uh, fresh new perspectives, fresh new uh, thinking fresh new ways of perceiving. Well, let, yeah, let's step back on that. Let's step back on that because I don't want it to sound like um, there's something in you that will uh, guide you to, um, it's hard to say it. It's like guide you to what you intend, you know? I mean, like it's not going to create stuff outside for you. It's going to create stuff inside for you that raises your level of understanding. But let's step back. What I'm speaking to is my way of having faith in, in Sydney Banks saying that um, we are all part of the mind and, and it will assist you. It will assist you in life. And whenever I heard that, Jamie, I would relax my, my own thinking about how my life should go and mm -hmm. just feel good about that. Now, now. What he talks about you being assisted to is um, finding yourself. <laughs> you know, he might say sometimes being happier. He might sometimes see, say the true nature of life, see? But that's what the assistance is. Um, it isn't that you will then get a new car. The, ass the assistance is in you finding, like you said, Jamie, a higher, a higher level of understanding that gives you a new perspective of you and life and you and relating to life. And it's there for you. And, and we can't find the strategy for that. 
But we can keep looking to uh, have that come to us and keep an eye on that. Um, you know, I read Sydney Banks a lot. That continues to wake up things for me. You know, the thing that hits me as I'm listening to you, Mark, and I'll, I'll kind of lay this out and then you can let me know what you think. What I heard you say is that when, when Sid says there's a, there's a power in life, something that we're all part of, uh, an intelligence that will guide us, what I heard you say, it, it's going to guide you to having a happier life. It's going to guide you to finding uh, your inner self, your true self, who you really are. And what it's not going to guide you in is whatever you decide your life should be in terms of, uh, I don't know, what kind of car you want or what kind of job you want or what kind of... And, and to me, that seems so such a powerful distinction because we live in a world where a lot of the time we, we get the message that once we can get things to be a certain way in terms of get life to look the right way in terms of having the right things and experiences and people and get it. So it's all just right. Then we get to be happy and peaceful and joyful. Mm -hmm. And what I'm hearing is that, you know, you use the word faith mm -hmm. and, and what I'm hearing, but don't let me put words in your mouth is having faith that there's something in life that, uh, will lead you to the beauty and peace and love and happiness. It's an expression of who you really are and that things don't need to be any particular way for that to happen. Well, first, um, us thinking about things to be a particular way are interference. <laughs> it's an interference, you know. It doesn't mean that um, so that's the first thing to see that when you're thinking that way, um, uh, it, it's just interfering. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I mean is remarkable. It really stuns me every time I hear Sid say it is that you already have it. I mean, there's nothing to set up. <laughs> you know, that, that's the, the weirdest thing to me is that, there's nothing to set up or get to because you already have it. The only thing in your way is the thinking that there is something that you need more of. Yeah. Or that we need to change it to fit. Something yeah. 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 I mean, that is, I mean, that just stops me in my tracks. Every time I listen to him talk and he comes to that part, you know? So when we're looking for that perfect life, that's interference. It interferes with us just realizing we have it right now. Yeah. Gratitude, for example, he says, is a really powerful place to be. When he says, he says mental health is contentment. And you know how he defines that? Being satisfied with what is. Mm. So, you know, all our thinking about, oh, man, you know, I got to get something better than this. I need more money and all of that. See, you got to just see that's interference. It doesn't mean anything's wrong. It just means, you know, um, it might be helpful not to engage that any further. You know, it's like, don't keep thinking you need more money when you see yourself doing that because it's interfering with what we're talking about, the pure essence that will just guide us to realize more of our true nature of, of, of happiness and well being or, or contentment. These deep, deep feelings that, uh, you know, when you enter them, when they arrive, if any of your listeners have really just had a moment of just pure love or peace or contentment, you will see that when you're in that moment, you don't think of yourself. You don't even think of you. So, so look, if you're thinking about you, you can see you're not there, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you're truly in the spiritual realm, feeling the uh, of love or um, contentment, you don't think of yourself. Mm -hmm. So it just this pure feeling of like, you know, a lot of times people will say I'm home. Mm -hmm. Oh, it just feels like, or it feels like when I was a kid and I had no worries, you know? Well, when you were a kid like me, I was out with my friend bike riding. I wasn't thinking of me. 
I was just thinking, let's go. What's the next adventure? What's life got to bring me? You know, I'm not thinking that way, but that's the state of mind I was in. Mm -hmm. So look, look, this just, this just came to me as we were talking. When you're really truly in the happiness you're looking for, you're not thinking of yourself. Mm -hmm. You see? So if you're thinking, um, oh my God, you know, uh, I need that better job or gosh, they're doing so much more than me. Why aren't I doing that? They're so much more successful than me. That's interference. Mm -hmm. That's all. We all do it. We all do it. We learn habits from day one. So you're never completely rid of your habits, but you can start to recognize them for what they are. And you can start to see that the true expression, uh, well, the expression of your true nature um, silences that. Mm -hmm. Silences that. Yeah, that's beautiful, Mark. And one of the things that strikes me is you've been using this understanding in your work clinically with patients for over 30 years. What did you say? 38 years. That's, yeah. that's a wealth of experience. And I know you were working in a, uh, working in the, you know, a health center, uh, or uh, I can't remember the correct word for what you call the organ, the kind of organization you were working in, yeah. but you were seeing, uh, people struggling with addictions and habits and compulsions like week in and week out with individuals and with groups. What have you, what do you, what do you see about the whole domain of addiction and recovery in relation to this understanding? What, how do, how do you kind of make sense of addiction and uh, recovery in terms of uh, this understanding? Um, well, I, I think that, um, I, I really think that all of us are looking for this feeling, right? And, um, so are people who really, uh, get involved in something so repetitively that it's, they become addicted to it psychologically. I'm talking psychologically now. Mm -hmm. There are chemicals that bring about a physiological addiction, but I'm not talking there. And so as I've looked at it with people, um, I really think that ultimately it's just a human being trying to feel better. Mm. Now, the trap is like, you know, the trap we just talked about. Um, well, when my life gets so in such or such a way, then I'll, I'll have what I'm looking for. They just get trapped in something they're doing um, that has brought some kind of good feeling. Um, or different feeling maybe. And um, they start to think that's what does it for them. Mm. And they get hooked like all of us, you know, all of us. So uh, th those are just basic, ge you know, general uh, understandings that I've come to. And it's helped me see the humanness of addiction, you know, the, the innocent psychological innocence of addiction. It's just, some human being trying to get a a better feeling and they think what they're doing is is going to give it to them <laughs> you know like when we believe what we're doing is going to get us to feel better um uh, it's tempting to keep doing it isn't it yeah so that's all i i see it as and i i i really think that one of the key ingredients for people to really try to open up and look at something differently is hope hope that what they are what you're offering uh will be the thing that will help them and what that's what i've seen with the principles when i offer that it gives people hope and that's the first step really you know to really being able to make a change i I'm, mark when people when you when people kind of pick up on that from you and they get that sense of hopefulness, what does the kind of journey from there to kind of wellness or to letting go of addictive habits and that sort of thing, what does that journey look like? I know, and I know it's probably as uh, there are many different answers to that as there are clients you've seen, but what are some of the, you know, the broad brush strokes you might take from that? 
Yeah, you know, there's a full continuum, including people that kind of just drop out of it, you know, just mm-hmm. don't, you know, just aren't ready to hear. But I have seen surprisingly quick um, understandings, particularly, well, not particularly, but I guess really that I usually uh, speak to people and people kind of resonate m- easily to the nature of thought. Mm. And I will quickly, like, um, um, we used to offer a, a two week, five day a week uh, class in the afternoon for people. And I would share different life experiences from this principles understanding. I would introduce the principles and so forth. And within the fourth day, mm. people are talking about how they are no longer angry at home or how they didn't get angry at home the last couple of days or, uh, you know, how they're feeling better just generally, how you could see some people who are, you know, really, if you've been in a drug or in a drug or alcohol for a while, you, your appearance looks pretty bad. Mm. And in, you know, in three days you hear people are coming in showered, hair combed, neatly dressed, saying things like, I don't know, I feel better. I just don't know what it is, whatever it is you're saying. So, I mean, it was relatively quick. And then people want to hear more. That's what I've seen. And so the course really is sustaining that, right? Uh, Deepening the understanding for that. So people continued uh, with me in groups. Um, We had programs, you know, weekly programs. So people would continue in groups and continue to learn and bring issues in that they didn't quite see this. They got still caught up in emotions and we would, we would talk about that together. But what really surprised me is um, the ready availability in people with addictions when they have hope uh, to catch on. Mm. And I really think that hope, and if you talk truth, you see, um, I knew this to be true. I really did. I knew this was the way. I re- I, that's, so people heard that. I didn't say to them, you know, this is really the way. They just knew I knew with certainty. So when they had hope, they heard that piece. And so they relaxed. That's my explanation of it. Um, I really like that, Mark, because what I, I hear a couple of things. One is you didn't say to them, oh, by the way, this is the truth and I'm really certain about it. They picked up on your sense of certainty because of what you'd seen that had made a difference to you. Yes. So that's the first thing I heard. But also the the thing I really like also about what you said is that the, when they heard that certainty and heard or or drew the conclusion that they had reason to be hopeful, they kind of relaxed because maybe even without knowing it, they'd been scared, scared that there's something wrong with them, scared that their life was going to be condemned to living in a certain way, scared of all that stuff. And when that fell away, that kind of opened them up to hear something new. Is that, is that kind of so true? Yeah, that's so true. Oh yeah. There's a lot of, I mean, you know, people know what they're up to and there's a lot of shame because, you know, it affects uh, family and their relationships, all of that. So there's shame, there's fear. Uh, Who would want to uh, take a look at something they're doing when they see no way out Mm. and um, only get berated um, if, you know, they, they admit it. Now I'm, I'm talking to you about, I'm not, I'm giving you the I'm giving you the understanding I've come to about it. And uh, it varies in terms of how much work people have to do with this understanding. But the key ingredients is really hope Mm -hmm. and people hearing this is true. And that um, I'm not just telling them something that I was trained to tell them, which they've experienced quite a bit of, right? But they are, uh, they are frightened and they are guilty and they are feeling shame. Mm-hmm. And if you don't hear that and uh, 
speak to that with understanding and love. Um, that I think that was the other part too, Jamie. We had a program of love. Can I tell you a quick story? Oh, please do. Yeah. Uh, so this one day, I'm I'm gonna. Sorry, I got touched by it. Um, one day I'm opening my office and I'm right by the waiting room, you know, and um, well, our program started at three o'clock and I saw one of our members there at 1230. And I said, this isn't his name. I said, Joe, what are you doing here? I'm, we already had a good relationship, you know, so I'm kind of joking. What are you doing here so early? Did you forget the time? He goes, no, I know it's at three o'clock. I said, well, you know, you're early. He goes, that's okay. I love the feeling here. I just want to sit in it a while. Hmm. So there's the other aspect of it, Jamie, is that, uh, is that you really see people are suffering. And uh, so many times they re they've received judgmental, uh, hmm. judgmentalness, you know, or being judged. Um, so I think that's the other element. And, and that's what everybody responds to anyhow, right? If, if people are met with love, I, it's hard not to feel that at some level. And Mark, what do you think accounts for, or how would you describe the fact that people come along, they sit in a room, you know, in a, a health center for five days, and they start experiencing a, a, a deep, peaceful feeling of love and connection and well-being. And based on what we've said so far, it's coming yeah. from within them. So it's not like they're getting it from, you know, something in the coffee or getting it from you. Yeah. They're getting it from within them or it's coming from within them. What is it that accounts for that? Right. Yeah. You know, um, you know, um, I mean, I have my thoughts, but again, I think really it's, to me, I think it's a mystery. Mm -hmm. I really do. I think it's something that, uh, is spiritual. I mean, we're talking about spiritual, a level of consciousness, a rise in a level of consciousness is spiritual, meaning mm -hmm. that you cannot, force your insights or a level of consciousness or seeing life in a in a more loving perspective you can't mm -hmm. but um so it's spiritual so we're taught trying to give some form to this um i don't know really i think i think i don't know i think um i think the feeling in the room is really important I think the feeling that gets generated when people quiet down their apprehension together or their defensiveness together and are met with love and they start quieting down, I think that feeling is what we're all connected to. So it comes alive. And I think in that feeling is the wisdom people are looking for, right? Mm -hmm. I think uh, I come into the picture in... I don't know, helping people with clear, keeping it clear, you know, clarity. So, so if they describe it in one way and I kind of see, well, that's not quite it. Uh, I can help guide them so that they look a little, uh, they look outside of their own intellect about, about it. But really to tell you the truth, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm just surprised because there are times I'm in a group and I'd say, well, this person will never get it. Oh yeah. This person will get it maybe that person, and they just surprise me. Mm -hmm. um, but I really would say that it's the feeling in the room. It's people with that feeling, we get beyond our, our intellect. And in that feeling, Sid said, wisdom lies in the feeling, not in these words, mm -hmm. not in the terminology, really, even. Yeah. yeah. That makes so much sense to me, Mark. Uh, our mutual friend, Chip Chipman, once said, and it really struck me, there's information in the feeling. And I yeah. just never heard that before. I'm like, yeah. what? This was the first workshop I ever went to. But, but the thing that really struck me in what you said is that 
when people start to touch that feeling, to experience that feeling, they realize on some level that this is what they were looking for in the booze or in the drugs or in the cigarettes or in the, you know, whatever it might be that they've been, uh, wherever it might be that they've been searching, this was what they were looking for. And then the wisdom in that kind of, the way it looks to me anyway, is it kind of updates their system and lets them know, you know, you've already got it. Yeah, I think they come to their, yeah, I think they come to thinking about it along those lines their way. Yeah. Yeah, I think they do. I think, uh, um, I think, uh, see, I think that takes care of them in, in many different ways, you know, like, like I'm saying, you know, people find their own way, you know, they, they bring back these stories of puzzlement. Mm. of you know wow what's going on here i don't mean that they say it superstitiously they say it with uh hope and gratitude you know and want to know more they yeah. want to hear more but they they surprise themselves that they're they just get different thinking about their lives you know at home they found themselves to be calmer or mm. they didn't argue with um the person who gave out paychecks that they usually argue with. And they're wondering, how's this happening, you know? And uh, so we talk about it more and, you know, start to lay out for them at least the understanding of these principles, but really help them see where their experience is coming from and deepen the understanding for them. Mm, Beautiful. Mark, that's all we've got time for today, but I know you... Uh, mentor people and coach people and and do that work. Where can people find out more about you if they want to reach out to you and get in touch? Uh, well, I think two things. They could email me, and the email address is um, uh, the abbreviation of Doctor Dr. Doctor Mark Howard, my full name, at Comcast dot net, mm-hmm. um, or they could um, go to my website which is uh, threeprinciplesinstitute.org. That's great. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Mark. Well, thank you, Jamie. This is wonderful to be able to talk with you this way. It's just been beautiful. Yeah, same here, Mark. Yeah. Thanks.